Hi, my name is Mike and this is the home of guns and horsepower. Thanks for joining me for today's video where I'm going to discuss the five things I hate about my Porsche Panamera. And believe me, it wasn't easy to make the list. This car is pretty awesome. The number five thing I hate about my Porsche Panamera is the rear visibility. It's extremely poor. And I have the spoiler up, which cuts it a couple of inches, but it really doesn't matter. As you can see, you can't see anything out of the back that's even lined up with the car or lower. So thank goodness for the backup camera, because you can't see anything out of here really. And then with the tinted windows, it doesn't help with visibility at all. Here I am in the dark, giving you an example of the rear visibility. You really can't see much. Sometimes at night when I back up, I can't really see around me, especially with these dark windows. Then I'll roll the driver and passenger side windows down just to give me a little bit more visibility. But luckily the backup camera and the parking sensors help out tremendously. Here's a shot of the backup camera along with the parking assist system that uh, makes backing up possible. So uh, that's the number five thing I hate about this car, is the poor visibility out of the back. But I can deal with it because it has great visibility out front, and that's what this car is designed to do, is go forward quickly. The number four thing that I hate about my Porsche Panamera is navigating through the car's uh, infotainment screen here in the center console. It's not very intuitive for me. Uh, sometimes I can't find the function that I'm looking for, and then it's a little difficult for me to get back. It's got buttons down here. This is mainly for audio. And then over here is the car functions. So right now we're in the car mode and you go to your options and there's different functions you can move through. See like there, some stuff is the dial, some stuff is the button. It's not very intuitive for me. I've had the car for like I said, three years now and I'm still learning something every time I use it. I just don't use these functions very often. But this is one of the things that uh, has been a source of frustration and it can be a little difficult to get back to your previous screen or get back to the radio so it's been a been something that's kind of frustrated me a little bit so that's the number four thing that I hate about my Porsche Panamera the number three thing that I hate about my Porsche Panamera is trying to park this car it's extremely wide and it has that long sloping front end Pretty easy if you're in a tight spot to scrape the curb or scrape a retaining wall or run it along some bushes. Thank goodness for those parking sensors though. They've kept me from uh, scraping up anything so far. So from the inside you can't see anything down, below, down in this area at all when you go to park it. And like I said it's very wide. Barely fits in my garage. And then with the wheels they stick out so close to the body that it's easy to scrape them. So far I've been lucky and haven't done any damage, but I've seen other Panameras where they're pretty chewed up on the rim. So it's a pretty easy thing to do when you're parking it. But that's the number three thing, is parking this wide sloping beauty. Now for the number two thing I hate about my Porsche Panamera. And it is this dash mounted clock. When I first got the car I thought it was pretty neat to have an analog clock on the dash there. I thought it was a, a nice elegant feature, but after a closer examination I realized, well for one, the clock was broken when I got it. The hands never turned. That's the smaller dial down there is the actual clock. And then later on when I was dusting out these vents, one of the hands just fell off. It's sitting down in there. I don't know if you can see it down in there. And the big analog dial is just the second counter. It kind of goes along with the sports chrono package, so it's like it coincides with the lap timer on one of the gauges in the dash. And then you have the digital clock there. But it's just kind of pointless to me. It seems to be more in the way than anything. It's not a very nice looking clock. It's obviously not functional in the analog state. This one's broken. And it has that chrome bezel around it. 
where if I pan up here right above it, you can see right there, there's its reflection in the windshield. And when I first got the car, it did distract me. I, um, it attracted my attention a lot. But after a while, I guess I just kind of became accustomed to it. And I don't really notice it anymore. But every once in a while, I do get a glimpse of it. You can see it there as I pan down. You can see right above, there's that top half of the chrome bezel reflecting right there. Hovering above it in the windshield, almost looking like a UFO hovering above. It's about a $700 option, I believe. And it just seems like Porsche could have put a much nicer and much longer lasting clock in here. It just seems pointless to me. So this is the number two thing I hate about my Porsche Panamera. Is it's non-functioning, distracting, not really useful clock. There's two other places in the car that show the time digitally. So this is kind of unnecessary. Well, that's the number two thing I hate about my Porsche Panamera is this stupid clock. It's time now for me to list the number one thing that I hate about my Porsche Panamera. And I hate to even say that. Sorry, baby, it's not you. It really has nothing to do with the car. It just has to do with the complete lack of aftermarket support. When I got the car, I was hoping that I'd be able to tune it later on, increase the horsepower, you know, upgrade the looks on the outside, maybe some carbon fiber bits here and there. But as I start searching, all the Porsche tuners, all the normal people, they don't touch this car. They leave, they don't do anything for it. I guess it has to do with, you know, it's not a uh, high number car. It's not high numbers out there. There's not a lot of them sold. There's probably just not a huge market for aftermarket stuff. So they just stay away from it. There's probably not a lot of profit. In it. But it is something that really bugs me. I was hoping to upgrade the horsepower. I was hoping to upgrade the looks with some carbon fiber. Like down here, I was hoping to get this piece done in carbon fiber. I thought that should have been something easily available. The uh, black plastic bits up front in carbon fiber, but nobody makes it. I was also hoping to increase the horsepower. Now that I've had the car for a few years, I've gotten used to its power and I'm looking to add some. But all the normal tuners, they don't do anything for it. I was hoping Cobb, you know, they do a lot of simple plug and play ECU tuned devices, but they don't touch the Panamera. Um, Rentec, none of the other Porsche tuners do anything for the Panamera. You can pretty much just change exhaust and suspension. Well, the suspension on this car is pretty superb for as it is, and I have number one complaint about the car is the complete lack of aftermarket parts for it. I'd like to make some changes. There's just nothing out there. I'd have to foot the bill myself to develop them, so that's my number one thing. I know it's nothing major. It actually has nothing to do with the car, but uh, right now, that's for me, that's my number one complaint. Well, there you have it. There's the five things I hate about my Porsche Panamera. I hope you found this video useful and informative. Uh, once again, please browse my channel and don't forget to subscribe so I can continue making this content for you. Thanks for watching.